Hey guys, we are back here on PlayStation Livecast, coming at you live from E3 2016. We're here in the PlayStation booth, and we are here with John and Chris from Ben Studio. Jeff. Jeff. I, you, I was told you were Chris. You're no, Jeff. They lied. I wish I was they, they lied. <laughs> I might have gotten confused. It happens. We're here to talk about Days Gone. This is the game that you guys have been working on for a while now, coming to PS4. Now, I mean, we saw a lot of this last night in the uh, PlayStation E3 press conference. Tell me, I mean, is, is this sort of a reflection of, like, this, this, this popular love of, like, zombie culture? I mean, is that how you guys are coming at this? Ah, oh, no. It couldn't be further from the truth. So, you know, we first and foremost, we're a big fan of open world games. Yeah. So what we really wanted to do was kind of create a game uh, that was set in an open world, a dangerous open world. And to do that, we, you know, we brainstormed a lot of ideas about, you know, what would, you know, what would make riding a bike through the high desert of the Pacific Northwest, just super, super dangerous. And one of the, you know, we're big fans of like World War Z. Yeah. We like the idea of having um, a lot of enemies on the screen. Yep. That's one of the things that, you know, the power of the PS4 allows us to do. Yep. So, you know, we, you know, we kept, that kind of like how all this stuff kind of came, kind of came together. So first thing I want to say is they're not zombies. Right. Thank you for setting me straight. <laughs> yes, they're freakers, and the, you know, and it's like, okay, yeah, people looking at the demo last night probably are like, okay, yeah, it's another zombie game. And the biggest difference is our freakers are alive, right? So it's it's an infection. If depending on what how old you were when you were infected, it alters you in a different way. And, and so, more importantly, they're they're alive in that they have uh, needs and rules. And, and oh yeah, and, you know, they have a cycle that they live by, and that really really informs a lot of the open world sandbox gameplay, the way that they, understanding how they, they behave and what they need. Yeah, and so different behaviors, clear. Right? Yeah. So like in the, in the demo, you saw a Deacon came across a Newt. So Newts are adolescents when they were infected, and they're opportunistic. They run away from you unless they, unless they feel like they can get the jump on you, or if, you're, if your health is down, then they'll be, you know, then they'll, you have to kind of watch the rooftops. So that they're one type, the Horde is another type, and there's several more in the game. Fascinating, yeah, that, that, you guys really are, are I think, Trying to kind of re-examine some of these these sort of tropes that we see out there a lot. Bring something new and fresh, that's awesome. Another thing that really caught my eye, and we're seeing some great footage here. Game is a looker, no doubt about it. I'm really interested in sort of the world and, and the protagonists themselves. What can you tell me about the protagonists? Yeah, so, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, what we really wanted to do was tell, tell a story uh, that, you know, the kind of story that we like to enjoy. So, you know, we, we love all kinds of, you know, things like Sons of Anarchy, we were fans of that. And, you know, that kind of protagonist, what he, what he represents to us is brotherhood and camaraderie and just loyalty. So, you know, that kind of brought to it, but also the skill set, right? Like, you know, how, you know, the kinds of things that a biker would know how to do, like riding the bike. We're seeing some of that right now, right? actually. The yeah. love of the open road. I mean, that's a huge part of the game. Yeah. You know, he doesn't want to settle down in the encampments. He refuses to. You know, because his his uh, you know his, his, the MC's all gone except for you know the you saw in the trailer he's got like one friend left. Um, it's just you know his ability to like stay alive. Yeah, and it, it's not a game about bike culture or about a biker gang. It's about a, a guy who was a biker before everything fell apart, fell apart, and he's struggling to fit into this new world. But that that skill set he had, that badass skill set, kind of has a has a, a purpose. Here, it's got a value as a bounty hunter and as a mercenary. There's a lot of people in this world who need things. They need vengeance, and he's just the guy to help deliver it for them. Yeah. So, it, in being the outsider, it, it's not about him being a biker so much as somebody who's not. He's on the outside trying to understand where he fits, you know, on the inside and how he fits there, and the conflict that that breeds, and the way that it motivates a lot of his jobs and missions. And you can see that in the trailer, right? So, you know, the, the demo is action-packed. It's got these, you know, huge, vast numbers of freakers that you're fighting. But in the trailer, I hope it kind of came across that what we're trying to do is tell a much more sort of human story. So, yeah. so Deacon has, you know, he feels loss, he feels regret. You know, not just that everything that happens in the world, but deep personal loss as well. And, you know, the, the story is really about what happened to him, how did he become this way, and what does his future hold? So tell me a little bit about the environment that we're exploring. I mean, I, the game is set in the Pacific Northwest, if I'm not mistaken. Where yeah, you guys yeah, are yeah. from, yeah. Yeah, so Bend, yeah. Bend Oregon. Um, <laughs> and, the, you know, our fictional town is Farewell, Oregon. And the original name for Bend was, in, in like 1900, was Farewell Bend, because ah. that's where the Oregon Trail kind of split. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so, but you, when you think of Pacific Northwest, you think of Seattle, rain, forests. And what pe most people don't know is that 80% of Oregon is actually high desert. I did not know that. It's on the other side of the Cascade Range. And same thing with Washington, Northern California. It's all very, very harsh environment because we're, you know, we're high elevation 
in a lot of different kinds of environments. Everything you saw in the trailer is real. You can ride your bike through those areas, you can explore, you have dense forests, you have desert areas, you have lava tube caves, all created by sort of volcanic activity over the last you know, million years. Yeah, it's not all hipsters and exotic donuts. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, and donuts. Starbucks coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad to know that. That would be the, uh, maybe the worst apocalypse of all. So here we are, we're seeing a horde. Um, I can only imagine that it's got to be a real technical struggle to get to animate this, these many characters on screen at once. Oh, it's, yeah, and we, you know, we have... Look at that. We have a studio of, of about 100 people and just some in, really, really talented engineers who were able to work, you know, using the power of the Unreal Engine and a lot of our own code. Just, you know, because every single one of those guys is real. It's not like any, you know, it's not like we have a few active guys in the front and of the horde. And then some Yeah, no, it's like around, every yeah. single one of those guys. And you know, when you watch Look Jeff, at that. When you watch Jeff play the demo last night, he played it one way. You could literally play this demo any way you want. Yeah. You're, you're going to see me kind of go inside the building here. You could go left, you could go right, you could go straight. You could just take your chances anyway. This is awesome. And I mean, yeah, again, it's, it's, I've just never seen such a quantity of, of creatures. They look great too, but it, it, it's very, uh, yeah, that's very disconcerting getting that vision. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what I would do uh, if I was in that situation. That's it's very upsetting. So uh, very, very cool. Early on in the game, you run for your life. Yeah, yes. I, I can imagine. And a little earlier, we saw one of those newts you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Super creepy. Uh, geez, th this, is, uh, this is really intense here. I, d I wasn't able to see every second uh, during the press conference, so this is uh, fun for me to, to get a closer look. Bam. Good stuff, good stuff. So, um, you know, obviously Deacon is a former biker, he's a biker. Uh, how will the bikes impact the gameplay? I mean, other than the ability to ride. It's, a, it's an important character and tool for the player. It's, it's his bike, it's, it's, uh, he doesn't have throwaway bikes. He, it's, his, it's his ride, it's his steed. And he can upgrade it and improve it and, and make it something that helps him be more capable in the field and uh, carry things out of the field. So, it's, awesome. It yeah, was part of his life before, and it's part of his personality now. It's just a different. It's a different style bike with a different purpose. Yeah, because you know a lot of open world games, basically vehicles are disposable. You yeah. just grab one, you ride or whatever. That's not the way our game works. Because yep. number one, the roads are broken, mm. right? So we have you know bridges are out, and you do a lot of off roading. So you know you can't get cars around the world very easily. Um, so there are other vehicles in the game. But like Jeff was saying, it's like the bike is almost like another character. And, it's like you know, the trusty steed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Is it, are you going to be able to upgrade or maintain the bike in various ways? or? Yeah, we're not going into a ton of detail about that. But yeah, you know, one of the things we really sort of wanted to do was ground the game. Yeah. So it's very realistic. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we didn't want it to be kind of a chore right, yeah. for the player. But yeah, there's definitely some aspects of, you know, what you would expect to, you know, if, if, if you were thinking to yourself, what would I do in a post-apocalyptic world where everything's trying to kill me? You know, we kind of wanted to try to deliver on that. That's awesome. So uh, we're, we're still seeing this horde, and this is really an awesome set piece. And you were talking a little bit about alternate paths. Um, I, I'm told that there are, you know, there's traps, there's, there's, there's gadgets, there's uh, crafting. Uh, tell me a little bit about how that uh, factors in here to Days Gone. Well, so, you know, Deacon, he's kind of a, uh, an everyman. And, you know, what, what do we like? We like to duct tape stuff together and feel like heroes, right? Yeah. We, we like to solve problems with duct tape. And it started with MacGyver. Ripley and Aliens, yeah. I, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a MacGyver in this world. <laughs> and he really kind of has to, what, there's what he knows and then what he can learn. And uh, the ability to kind of make, make things out of what's around the world. Uh, the ability to turn a, an airbag into a bomb and combine uh, disposed electronics as proximity mines. It are, are all tools he learns just to kind of stitch these things together really quick and use them as tools against the horde and against other enemies. And d down in the, we, in the theater demo today, uh, there's an extended version of what you saw last night. Awesome. That has alternate paths and it shows a lot of that. And it's, you know, what we're calling it is brutal sandbox combat. Uh, because what you can do is like, every, like Jeff was saying, it's like what the player wants to do, we try to empower that. So, you know, when you're fighting the horde, there's just, you can, you know, depending on what you bring into that encounter, uh, you can take them on almost any way you want. That's awesome. Now, one thing I did notice, uh, and maybe it's just me, and I I'm kind of extrapolating a little bit about uh, the Freakers that you mentioned earlier. They're still technically alive. Mm -hmm. So they're not the they are alive. dead. No, yeah. They are alive. They are alive. So um, is this a game where headshots are, are necessary to take down one of these Freakers? I mean, that's a classic sort of zombie trope. It looked to me like maybe that wasn't the case here, but I might be wrong. No, see, it's not about because the, because they're living creatures. Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, one of the terms that Jeff coined is the freako system. Because if mm. the player were to just kind of wander around and just 
you stealth and kind of watch them, you'll see uh, swarmers attacking the newts, right? So you have this, they're interacting with each other because they're trying to stay alive too. They're trying to eat, they're trying to drink, they're trying to, huh. you know, stake out territory or, or whatever. So yeah, you can't, you could take a headshot, certainly, but you know, if you shoot them in the heart, they'll die just as quickly. That's fascinating. That's a really interesting uh, take on that. Um, and I mean, clearly you guys have a, a, a very different vision uh, compared to whether it's The Walking Dead or something like that. But um, I'm curious, you know, zombie culture is really big. I'm curious what it is about themes like some of the ones that we see here in Days Gone. What would make those so appealing to so many people over such a long period of time? Oh, I, uh, you know, I, to me, I think it begins with just some latent fears we all have about our own future. You know, the way that we're draining resources. I think for me personally, Katrina, when Katrina hit, I realized, oh man, we're all alone out there. Yeah. Like when, when shit goes down, we got a government infrastructure, but it's probably not for us. <laughs> it's probably for, for some people, and, you know. And uh, so I, I, re I personally trace kind of the outbreak of the zombie genre kind of to that era. And I think nobody can put their finger on it, but it's just, I think we all realize we're alone. We have to learn how to make do for ourselves and look out for ourselves and our, and our friends and our families because nobody else is going to do it. And, and that's how Deacon and the, the few survivors survived is they didn't wait for the government to come rescue them. They, they, uh, they did it themselves. And everybody else who went to government, uh, government checkpoints, they probably died. Yeah. And it wasn't a smart move. Uh, you know, and I think the most powerful experiences, whether it's film or games, is all about, you know, conflict. And, it's, and there's nothing more hazardous and dangerous in a world that's literally filled with things that want to kill you. And so I think it kind of builds drama into any situation yeah, if, you're, if you're facing that. Yeah, I, I would never want to face that. That is uh, terrifying. And again, I, I, it's such a fresh, <laughs> uh, a fresh array of features that you guys are bringing to some concepts that we've seen before, but now we're seeing them from a very different perspective. Really excited about Days Gone. I know you guys are still deep, deep, deep in development on this one. Are you flirting with a release time frame at all? Do you have any idea when this game's coming out? Yeah, we have some big, we're not talking about that right now, but you know, one of the things that we really love about being part of Sony is that they, you know, they really want the game to be awesome. You know, so like we said, we've been working on this game for over three years, and you know, it just allows us time to develop every part of it, the character and the, you know, and the world and the setting, and it's just been, you know, it's just been really awesome to have the time to make the best game we can. Guys, I appreciate it so much. Thank you for coming by PlayStation Livecast. Really, game's looking fantastic. Thanks Absol for having us, man. Yeah, absolutely one of my standouts of the show. Uh, we are going to hear more about Days Gone in the, the days to come, I, I think. PlayStation.